Hi there, I'm Michael from 3D Print Anything. In this video I would like to take you along on the process of me duplicating a part using COD software. In this video we will be using this little gear wheel over here. This gear wheel is used in a two part mechanism to connect it to this knob over here and the other side is connected to an oven. The customer states that the oven is about 150 years old so replacement parts are no longer being made. The gear itself slides over a metal rod and is secured by like a grub screw in this hole I guess. Uh, I don't have the exact specifics about that because the customer stated that we don't need to draw this hole over here. The dimensions of that hole are quite critical so the customer itself will heal, uh, drill in the hole and uh, yeah, figure out what to do with it I guess. Let's start looking at the tools we need. Uh, the first thing of course is the little gear wheel or in other cases a part to draw. Uh, the second thing is calipers, preferably digital because digital is uh, better with higher accuracy. The third thing is cut software. In my case I'm going to use Fusion 360. I've got the startup license for that but it really doesn't matter what license you have. The fourth item is a slicer. In my case I'm going to use Idea Maker, but I guess any slicer will do. And last but not least, of course, we need a 3D printer. Um, I have several to my disposal. Uh, at first I thought it would be best to print out this part in uh, a resin printer, but when the customer stated that they are going to drill in uh, the hole by themselves, I figured out that maybe FDM printing is a better solution because with resin there is a chance that the gear wheel will just like explode upon drilling it. So without any further ado, let's step into Fusion. Uh, I'll get a camera ready at my part so I can explain what I'm doing in Fusion. So here we are in Fusion. Uh, let's get started by showing the origin point so we can start our sketch. If we look at the part over here, you can see that uh, the bottom has like this little flange over here. And I think that flange is easy to start drawing. So let's use that as the, the top part of, uh, of our drawing. Well, we're going to select the top on the on Fusion over here, but actually we're going to draw like the bottom first. So if we measure this diameter of this circle, wait, let me try to get that nicely on camera. This is fiddly, sorry. We see that it's about uh, 20.3 millimeters. 20.3. So we're going to draw a circle of 20.3 millimeters. That's the first part of this drawing. Let's zoom in a little bit. The diameter of the inner hole is about 10 millimeters. Um, Usually I would draw this a little bit bigger because uh, the part has to slid over the metal uh, thingy of course. But for now I'm going to leave it at 10 because the customer stated that they will drill out whatever they need. So let's measure the thickness of that uh, little flange now because we need to extrude it right now. Um, and the thickness of that little flange is about 1.2 millimeters. Which is perfect because we're going to print in layer lines of like uh, 0 0.1 millimeters high. So 1.2 millimeters is perfect because that will be exactly 12 layers. 1.2 millimeters. Now we're going to start a new drawing on top of this surface over here. And for this drawing we would like to draw the base of this gear over here. I, I hope you can properly see that on my uh, second camera. And uh, the diameter of that gear is about 18.2. Let, let's go with 18.2. 18.2. Now, of course, this gear has these little like uh, teeth thingies. Um, I've already counted how many those are, and those are exactly 16, so let's draw 16 of those. I know we can use some fancy tool to like create those gears for, uh, automatically, but for the sake of this tutorial I'm going to draw them myself. 
on the mating part, I've basically just uh, created a line from the center of the circle to the top. So this is exactly like half the width of the circle. Uh, by the way, I created this construction line by pressing X. So if I press X again, I get regular lines again, as you can see. Now that we got a center, uh, uh, a line from the center line, uh, we can like draw two uh, little lines from here to, for example, here and here to here. And I know that the the distance between those two uh, between two teeth is about one millimeter. So then we know that half of that is 0.5 millimeters. So we can give this a size of 0.5 and this a size of 0.5. And then we can also say that the height of this gear is about, let's say, 0 0.5. So now we've got one of those gear teeth drawn out, or actually the negative of it. Uh, we're going to select two of those edges. With the edges selected, we can press create on the left top and then press circular pattern. We're going to select the center point. So it knows where to center around, of course. And as you can see, it already finds out like the contour of the 360 degrees of those uh, gear teeth because it, we selected the center point. Right now, it is set to put in the negative of three teeth. Uh, but as I've stated before, we need 36. So here we go, 36, and we just press OK. So that's the drawing. Um, now we need to extrude it uh, by the height of those gears, uh, gear teeth. The height of those gear teeth is about 10 millimeters. Uh, wait. The height of those gear teeth is about, let's see, let's go with 10.4 millimeters. For the extrusion, uh, we're going to use both the gear part and the center part and I'm doing that because the wait my cameras because as you can see the this little gear is a little bit tapered so if we don't select the center part the inner hole will also be tapered and that's not really what we want so what we're going to do is that we are going to uh, extrude both and then remove the hole later on so let's extrude this by 10.4 millimeters. And we want this to go like, uh, I think it was five degrees, but might be less. Uh, hold on, let me, let, me quick, uh, let me quickly check that. It was actually three degrees, so let's go with three. We can uh, now hold out this middle section by just extruding this through here. And there we go. That's our part. That's pretty much all to it, I guess. Uh, well, and so that's everything to it. Uh, in a few minutes we have drawn out a, a pretty simple part. And because of the power of editing, you don't have to wait for the final result. I'll show you the final result right here. Here we got the copied gear wheel finished. And I think this one is sufficient. Of course, the, the, the like little deta details of the gears are not as accurate as the real one. But that's just the limitations of 3D printers, I guess. As you can see, it fits in the printed knob as well fits perfectly, just like the original gear wheel fits in the original knob. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video.